regardless of whether the fifth grade stays in the in the elementary schools or goes to the middle school, there are schools that will close. I feel slightly confused by the possibility of Xena Elementary School closing. I'm not sure why. It doesn't seem to make any sense to me. And as far as my feelings go, I feel disappointed that they would even consider it, actually. It is ridiculous to take the highest performing school on the best piece of property, most underutilized, and turn it into a, a non-functioning building that the residents will continue to pay taxes for and drive past knowing that it is no longer a part of our community. I mean, I know people who don't have children in the school district who like having the school here because it is part of the community and I think that really needs to be looked at. I want to make sure that you've, you've looked at every single, you know, crossed T and dotted I before you just assume Xena is, is the answer. It's part of everybody's life. And when something's part of your life, you fight for it. My experience at Xena Elementary was really uh, personal and it was um, my classmates and I got really close over the years because it was the same class from kindergarten to fifth grade and all the teachers um, and all the staff were really close too and it was kind of like another family and um, so I actually really miss being there. All schools are a family but this has truly uh, been a wonderful experience for me. The teachers are really nice and they've helped me in the subjects that I'm not so strong in. So Mr. Hansen creates MathQuest and MathQuest is a quest all over the campus where teams of three and four children and one adult go all over answering math questions and in order to get a clue to find the next question you have to answer the question right. And the question that always stuck out in my mind, because I would do this with my daughter, uh, which is how I know, is there was one question about Snow White. And Snow White needed to plant flowers, and she had seeds. And so we had to run out onto the nature trail, and waiting for us were seeds and spades and the question. And in order to be able to plant the seeds, you had to figure out the volume at which the seeds needed to be planted, and it was just amazing. But it was done with Disney, so which was equally amazing because it's a very cool thing that makes children want to learn. And cool enough that I remember this five years later. The teacher to student ratio it makes a huge difference. Um, one of my kids is really excelled, and one of my kids had a hard time learning to read and both of them were taken care of. Um, they gave the extra help that my little one needed and, he, and the older one got, um, you know, got more fun things to do because he's a little sharper than your average bear. My son just completed kindergarten and um, my son had homework every night and at first before my children came to the school and I heard that I thought, oh, that's awful, but it took 10 minutes you know, and it was wonderful because it was work that he did every night and he really reinforced. I mean, my son can add, he can subtract. And he got to wear uh, waders in the creek in the back and collect crawfish and learn about the biology um, of the ecosystem around here. Um, they got to learn about tapping uh, maple trees. They learned about the different species of birds in the entire, um, um, campus here. Um, so the reading, the the level of sophistication in the education that he received was far beyond what I would have ever expected. There are so few kids and the teachers are great and seems like the curriculum is really working for both of them and they're at different ends of the spectrum so you know not the, the spectrum. <laughs> when children are at a certain age I think that they prosper in a small school and small class size situation where there's fewer numbers of students in the room and in the building where students can get the attention that would help them get off to a good start in life. The grades just came out, the testing grades, um, for all the schools in the Kingston City School District and Mr. Hansen's fourth grade math 
group, 100% of them passed. There is no other school in the Kingston City School District that has these kind of numbers. No other school. We have our own field trip in our backyard. Uh, we don't need a bus. We walk, we explore, we uh, take the nets into the uh, creek and the children catch crayfish and little fish. There have been numerous times when science teachers in the high school would bring students out to Xena on field trips for stream studies, uh, for walking on the trail. It has 20 acres of forest which is rich in uh, in uh, uh, flora and fauna and uh, lots of animal life and the fact that we tap the maple trees is a great learning experience. Every class is able to tap the tree, collect the sap, boil it down and, actually, and then eat the syrup once it's completed. I'm here a lot. Like People often joke that I have to have a sleeping bag and a toothbrush hidden somewhere because I'm always here. The community garden was started about five years ago through a grant from um, Steve and Julie Noble. We had a lot of parent volunteers come in with um, help building the beds, um, delivering topsoil so that we would have enough um, soil and everything for the beds. The produce over the years has gone to Queen's Galley. Um, we have sent bushels of tomatoes, lots of peppers, eggplants, all kinds of things. And the students do the garden from planting to weeding and then harvesting the produce. I've witnessed three or four times when uh, emergency helicopters have landed here to evacuate uh, people who need to be taken to either the heart or the burn centers in the hospitals uh, as a matter of life and death and they're able to land the state trooper helicopters here and uh, do a quick rescue. That's something that couldn't happen in the city, I imagine. John Sebastian's son, his youngest son, uh, started kindergarten here. And John's done a concert when they were trying to do the playground. Ice circles happen naturally in uh, three different parts of the world. In Scandinavia, in other parts of the Arctic Circle, and in Upper Canada. But they also happen here at Xena. Several years ago, it was brought to my attention uh, during a uh, computer class which faces the windows face the stream that there was a large circular object spinning in the stream and uh, we were all very interested we threw in our coats on and ran out to the stream and further investigation revealed that it was a circular sheet of ice and it was spinning at first, we, we thought, what could possibly cause something like that? And then the class did an investigation, and we did some searching, and found out that indeed there is a natural phenomena called ice circles, where two streams converge together, causing uh, an eddy in the water to spin in a reverse direction of the stream. And if the temperature is just right and falls very rapidly, there's enough to freeze the water. And yet, if it has to be not so cold as to freeze the entire stream, because then there wouldn't be the circle effect. And so um, we took pictures of it and we, we reached out in some directions and as a matter of fact the Army Corps of Engineers contacted us and some other government officials studying ice circles. It was a great uh, learning experience for the students. It's just another example of the extraordinary opportunities available uh, at the Xena location uh, that just can't be duplicated anywhere else. The change is going to make a big impact on the students and their education. Put fifth grade into a junior high would be, in a sense, depriving children of part of their childhood. Childhood is a very precious thing. It happens to all of us only once. They're going to be thrust in with much older kids uh, who have made changes in their lives. They've entered puberty, they've uh, been exposed to certain social and uh, media experiences that these younger kids very well may not have done. The biggest thing on this school is it's a community school. It's not mud, mortar, or brick. It's a community, and that's what I believe in. 
and that's why I worked here 29 years. In Woodstock, we have three school districts. We have Saugerties, Antiora, and Kingston. And unfortunately, we've, we've had three elementary schools. Uh, West Hurley has been closed, Zena's on the block, and the Woodstock Elementary is now downsized considerably in, in the grades. We've taken away part of the heart of our, our community. I think the closing of the school would, be, would have a huge impact on the community, only because it's the only thing in the community besides the firehouse and your various churches. Only because we chose our house at the peak of the real estate um, because we wanted this school. Our property values would plummet, and I don't know that I would get the um, value for my house that I um, spent on it. And, you know, that's, uh, that's um, not only disappointing, but um, I don't know that I could really recover from that. I had a student this year who came from California, and they searched out this school. He had a significant health issue, but they searched out this area and this school specifically to come here. And it's been a healing journey for him in many ways, but his family have embraced the school and are just thankful for every experience he's had and to help him grow. Closing this school will affect deleteriously this community such that you're not going to get more tax money out of this community, you're going to get less. And I'm not, I'm not sure that's a good strategy. I mean, if we're talking about money, I think this community is going to be worth less without Xena. You're taking a school that is performing well. No guarantee that those same teachers that are inspiring the students will be moving with the students to a school that is not performing as well. In the past year, we've had the post office, the United States Post Office, looking to close all kinds of post offices, and they were, and they did. And then they reopened them because they realized what was happening to the communities. There's, there's all this talk from the Board of Edu Education about, you know, we need to save a certain amount of money, and money is very important in the educational process. But it's an educational process, right? The children have to be served. Finances are really there to serve the purpose of educating our children. So if you're going to damage children in the name of educating them, I think that's the wrong tack. If Xena closes, I'm going to be really sad because uh, everyone was really close there and um, it was a really unique place. It's kind of my childhood, so... If there's another option, I think it should be explored. It, it would take more time to investigate the other options because I do believe there are other options. There've got to be. I hope they're listening because uh, the community here uh, can identify many, many options. Um, it's just a ma matter of whether the Board of Education is willing to listen. The closing of Xena is, is, is like saying a final farewell to a family member. It will be a sad farewell, but knowing the way this community is and this family at Xena, we will make it the most stupendous, um, outrageous year you've ever seen, and Xena will not go down without a fight.